Um, I understand that um, uh, Ocean Boulevard was made in the Little Room. It was one of the few times that I was able to get into the Dagon Room because the room became so popular. Bill Simsek tried it up with Bob Seeger and the Eagles. Hotel California was done in that room. Uh, the two protégés that I had working with me on the Layla album, uh, Carl Richardson and Albie Gluten, went on to produce the Bee Gees. So between Simsek and Albie and Carl, they locked this room out so that I seldom could get into it. One of the times I got into it was with Eric, and we did 461 Ocean Boulevard in this room, which was a distinct pleasure. I mean, it was nice considering I knew what the room was about. <laughs> Of course, of course. It felt like moving back into your old home. I bet so. <laughs> and, and I understand this piano is a big favorite oh. of yours. The piano that uh, is in that chamber is the famous Layla piano, but it's mm -hmm. not Layla. Aretha, uh, Dr. John, the Leonard Skinner band, and the Jim Gordon on the tail end of, Layth of uh, the Layla album. That is the instrument, and it is my favorite recording piano in all my years in the business. Well, let's have a look at the, the chamber. This is the smallest studio in the Criteria Complex. As I mentioned in the control room, this is dimensionally a replica of that studio at 234 West 56 in New York, where there was a desk in this corner, a desk in that corner, a little control room about the size of the air chamber that we just walked through. And we would do business in here from like 10 in the morning until 7 at night, roll the chairs out, the piano was in that corner, put one desk on top of the other and start recording. Uh, this is the dimension of that room, but it's treated acoustically differently. You notice in this room, this room is a very tight, compact room. Uh, you can feel it on your ears when you walk in. Carpeting. Carpeting and velour, heavy, heavy velour treatment. Wooden splays, absorbings in back of all of the absorbing. This room, as I say, it was, was stuck on the end of A, because the A studio is right on the other side of this wall, the big one that we were just in. Business got so busy for Mac toward the end of the 60s, going into the 70s, he needed another space. We gave him my plans for the original New York studio. I took two years to get into this room. I couldn't get into it, and it really disturbed me. Bill Simsek, Bill Simsek moved in and was doing Bob Seger, uh, Stephen Bishop, uh, Carl Richardson and Albie Gluten moved in here with the Bee Gees and <laughs> ran that string of records by. The one time I finally got into this room, Ocean Boulevard was done in here, in this room. That was the last time I used the room, because I couldn't get back <laughs> into it, because then Simpson came in with the Eagles. Hotel California was done in this room. So this was, this was all of a sudden the small group's favorite room. Now, there's another room we haven't looked at yet, because it's not a functioning studio, but at that time, when it was functioning, people like CSN or the Eagles either wanted that room or this room. They didn't want the big room. They wanted the intimate room, the tight room. And this is the one that Simsek and Carl and Albie mastered and got magnificent results. I mean, I can't say enough of the records they made in this room that are still being made in this room, but by different producers. But this room is a utility room. It really is. And because it is so dead, it's not the best room, not the exotic room to try and do drums and acoustic guitars. You'd want one of the other chambers to do that. But for today's electric type bands, and you notice when we were in the control room, there were two synthesizers up against the back wall. Obviously, this is a state-of-the-art type recording where they're probably using click tracks, they're probably using ISO, We've got a microphone in there and one isolation booth. The two vocalists here can't even see each other for probably duet purposes, listening on earphones. But if one flubs, there's a chance they can punch in one line without having to redo both. That's why they are screened the way they are. This room is an inert room, but it's, mag it's a magnificent room. This piano is the piano that was on Eat a Peach, 
on Aretha Franklin, Don't Play That Song, uh, and on the Layla album. This is that instrument. And it's still my favorite recording piano in the world. If I could ship it wherever I have to go, I'd take it with me room that will be shown is the state-of-the-art recording studio at Criteria. I understand you have produced the Almond Brothers in that room. Uh, yes, the Shades of Two World, or no, Seven Turns album, excuse me, the Seven Turns album was done in this room. Uh, we had to go to something unusual, you know, the Almond Brothers, two drummers isn't enough, we now have a percussionist, so we have oh. <laughs> three men in the back line all playing two by four. <laughs> <laughs> I have two guitars up front, a bass and uh, Gregory. Oh, and uh, this room, we needed this room, it was not as big as the large, large chamber, but it was suited to the nature of the music that they wanted to capture in this endeavor. And uh, we did the Seven Turns album in this state-of-the-art room. And it's a, you'll see, it's a unique room. OK, let's have a look. We conspired for about three years with the help of John Storick, the architect, to design this studio. Uh, if you observe, there's carpeting, there's tile, there's parquet. There's barrel tile over there so that you could either have the drummer sitting with his back here so that his cymbals and high percussion parts would splay all over the room. If you look up in the room, you'll notice there's not a flat ceiling. There's no reflective parallel surfaces in this room. None whatsoever. 